Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can. Just go to patreon.com slash Canada EHX. You can support the podcast for as little as $3 a month. Growing up, there was one individual I saw on my TV screen quite a bit. His name was Tom Jackson. I saw him on North of 60. I even saw him in a great episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. And he's been a fixture of Canadian television and movies for years. He's also an activist, a philanthropist, and so much more. And I had the pleasure of talking to Mr. Tom Jackson, one of the greatest Indigenous actors I would say ever. And we talked about a variety of things, including the Huron Carol, which is an annual event held at Christmas that helps raise money for food banks, the importance of helping others, and what we can all do during COVID-19 Christmas season to help each other. It was a wonderful interview with a wonderful man, so let's get right to it. How have you been doing the past seven months uh, with COVID, uh, kind of like all the rest of us? Well, initially, um, I had, you know, probably similar reaction to, uh, to this as everybody else. I mean, the, the sheer weight of, um, of just getting my mind around what this means to not just the people in my world, but the world, um, the whole sense of isolation and uh, helplessness. What can one do? Uh, you know, for me, I'm blessed. You know, what you see in the background here is just a small, teeny little piece of my wonderful um, lodge where I live out in the country. So for Allison and I, Allison's my wonderful wife, for Allison and I, it, we, because we spent a lot of time on the road, mm -hmm. um, it, it was just like being on the road, except it didn't rock and roll. Right? <laughs> True we're enough. By ourselves and we're, you know, we were good. Mm -hmm. But what, uh, what, what transpired was in a search to try and find some comfort for ourselves and to find some normality uh, using what we normally use um, in our world to find comfort and for ourselves and others. I made some phone calls to listen. You know, we could find a way to reinvent some of the things that we do. And everybody's using cell phones and selfies and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a couple of phone calls. Um, to some folks that I'm good friends with and said, do you think we could do this? And the, the do this became a project called Almighty Voices, which is um, a streaming. And if you go to Almighty Voices, you can find it. Um, but it's a streaming a concert series. We did 12 episodes, one a week, and uh, raised funds for um, Unison Benevolent Fund, which is designed to help musicians in crisis. Okay. So that was a perfect relationship, but I had to go a certain route to find them. I didn't even know they existed. And the people that I talked to were also quite um, enthused about how we could help others. So we produced a series and um, not knowing what it exactly is to have a television station <laughs> or what it takes <laughs> to run a television station or to run episodes is one thing to recruit your friends and talent and ask them if they want to participate, but it's another to get all the product and get it in and find somebody at my end that um, could actually edit and, you know, be, you'd use B roll to, <laughs> help us accentuate what we wanted to say and all those things and without money. <laughs> One thing to do all, you know, we all want better health care and better roads and better schools and all of that. So that all takes money and political will. 
-hmm. So we had the will. Uh, and we had a lot of people that were doing nothing. They were stuck just like us. Mm -hmm. So we pooled together and said, okay, let's do something and see, we'll see what happens. And um, so that kept us busy for uh, you know, the first three, four months of the, of the COVID. And nice. then um, we moved on to thinking, okay, what are we going to do for a Christmas tour this year? Because we're not touring clearly. Mm -hmm. And we have traditionally toured for 32 years um, across the country, one end to the other, to raise money for mostly food banks in, initially, but then two other social service agencies mm -hmm. that uh, required help in and around Christmas. As, as you know, we all become more conscious, I think, at Christmas time about mm -hmm. others. And it's, uh, it's a great thing. The good news is, and the bad news is Christmas comes, but once a year. Mm -hmm. So that's good news and the bad news <laughs> that it actually happens is a great thing. Um, and it does happen to stimulate us to do things for others, particularly between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. So the trick now is to do it from New Year's to Christmas. Um, and I learned that from a couple of kids in Burlington. I did a show there and one of the organizers uh, brought his daughter and her best friend to the concert. And, you know, it came about because they asked where he was going and he told them he was going to this concert called the Huron Carol. And they said, what's well, a Huron Carol? And said, well, that's a benefit to raise money for a food bank. And they said, what's a food bank? So I explained to them what a food bank was. And they said, can we come to the show? And so they came to the show, and I'll tell you, they sat right down there, <laughs> right in front. And they were so, they were so enthused, and, and, you know, I could just see their life changing in front of them, and likewise mine. <laughs> and after the show, they went back to his house. And I know this because he sent me a, a message shortly after. Uh, describing this situation. And, and he heard his daughter talking with her friend about engaging their school and what they might be able to do with their school to raise awareness and funds for the food bank between New Year's and Christmas. Mm -hmm. So out of the mouths of babes comes this great thought which has, you know, changed a lot of lives is me becoming their messenger. Absolutely. Uh, kind of in regards to the here on Carol, is this year more important than, uh, are, every year is important, but is this year, is there that extra importance because people are dealing with COVID, people are having money that's tight because they're out of work? Uh, does it make it this year kind of a, a, a more important year than other years? I think you answered the question, um, but let me say this, um, that we have discovered, and as you will and as others will, discover that what we've been blessed with is a silver lining. And that silver lining is realizing we have at our fingertips the opportunity to do things that are very significant, maybe existed in our lives before, but are even more significant and more powerful. Uh, and you have more access to the world than you ever had. So my belief is, and touch wood, um, <laughs> my belief is that we will create more awareness and raise more much needed funds the food banks and social service agencies than we ever have. Mm -hmm. We could do 17 cities. Christmas only lasts, okay, it's Christmas from, from Christmas to New Year's, as I said, <laughs> but, but that's not one we, we build up to Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Like when we were on tour, we never did a show after Christmas, right? We did shows right up to Christmas. And we did last year, we toured to 17 cities. <laughs> and you have to get in between. 
we're already this year um, doing 20 shows. We have recorded uh, the Huron Carol. We have produced it. We're currently in post-production. Um, but we already are in 20 venues, and each venue has a 1,000 seats, a 1,000 screens, if you will. Right? Because they're not going to the theater. No, they're going exactly. to do just what you and I are doing, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a thousand screens. And if you do the math, that's probably 4,000 viewers. Mm -hmm. Because it's not likely a person is going to watch the show by themselves. No, exactly. So let's say that they're with their family. As right now, we are all coached <laughs> to stick at home and maybe with our family. You know, mm -hmm. try not to go out, stay home. So you need good health. You need to find things that make you healthy. Mm -hmm. This project will bring you health, hope, compassion, empathy, and love. Mm -hmm. And it'll bring you health. It'll create health within you. So let's say that there's four viewers per screen and there's a thousand screens. That's 4,000 viewers. Exactly. And what if those 4,000 viewers decide to make a contribution to your charity, to your food bank or your shelter? You know, just imagine what that means. Mm -hmm. just so that's a silver lining. You know, for me, it's a, it's a huge silver lining. And so all the, all the mechanics around getting this uh, up and becoming live have been put in place. So mm. we're ready to go. Yeah, it's a little early in the season, but we're <laughs> ready to go. So yeah, like you said, a silver lining. Uh, what will the show feature this year? Well, it's a combination of stories, songs, and tomfoolery, if you will. <laughs> uh, some shared experiences that I have had over the years. It's an awesome band. Um, and we went out to um, Blue Frog. It's a recording studio, but it's a performance uh, area too. Mm -hmm. So we went out and, and uh, when we recorded this, respecting all the protocols that COVID allows us or makes necessary. Um, and we, we wrote a show uh, that to some degree, um, it's all, all respect of Christmas and stories of Christmas and things that happened in my life and I can share them with you, but, but then you wouldn't go and watch the show necessarily. But anyway, <laughs> the point is that it's, it's, it is a combination of a lot of stories and traditional songs and original songs, um, mostly focused in on the light inside. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the theme of last year. We had a theme and the theme was path to a miracle. Last year we were trying to get people to take the first step towards a miracle to convince themselves that they could be part of a miracle, but they had to make the first step. Mm -hmm. And then the next step would be the question. Okay. What do you want to do now? What's your next step? What are you going to do next? Okay, I'm going to get up tomorrow. Well, why don't you just get up today? Make your today, make your tomorrow today. Mm -hmm. Do it now. And so we created miracles last year. This year, my belief is that we have to find that light inside, that spark that turns into a flame, that turns into a fire, it turns into an inferno of fury that allows us to do things we wouldn't necessarily do before, that allows us to be inspired by ourselves and by others. And again, uh, the underlining piece of that is to create health, mm -hmm. to learn how to dance and make space for happiness, to learn how to leap if you will, mm -hmm. to read good books, learn, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
to laugh. Make the most laugh. of it, yeah. Laughter is the best medicine on the planet, mm -hmm. anywhere, in the universe. The best medicine. The last time that you laughed 200 times a day, you were probably two years old. <laughs> when you were two years old, you probably laughed 200 times a day. Mm -hmm. Now you laugh, I don't know, 20? <laughs> Maybe the, the funny bone's a little, <laughs> a little creaky. Right? So you got to little... put some WD-20 or whatever it's called on the funny bone. Yeah. And so you have to learn how to laugh, mm -hmm. make each other laugh. So leap, learn, laugh. What do you think the last one is? There's four of them. Live? Right. Oh. Close. Close. <laughs> love. Love. Right? Leap, learn, laugh, and love. But love as a verb, not as a word. Mm -hmm. Love as a verb, not as a word. That's what Christmas is. Mm -hmm. Christmas isn't just the tree and the presents and the Santa Claus and, and the baby Jesus and all that. Mm -hmm. It isn't just that. It's a verb. It makes people do things. I, good news and bad news comes once a year. <laughs> exactly. Um, you kind of mentioned that there's silver linings to how, how it's being done this year. Some things are e easier. Um, like I said, you don't really have to travel, but are there any particular challenges that you had to overcome this year for the Here on Carol? Um, it was less challenging than you would think because we'd already done Almighty Voices. Mm -hmm. So we already had gone down this road of using virtual touring um, and participation from others. So we didn't have that many challenges. We, you know, once we were allowed to, to leave our houses, so to speak, and go out and, and work with others, there is that one thing that, um, again, was a challenge. And a lot of people before COVID are high on the hog and they go from high on the hog to the basement in one night, mm -hmm. overnight, mm -hmm. they go to the basement. And that's a challenge. And musicians and stage uh, crew, touring crew, all of those people, their income went like that. Yeah. So now we're in a position that we can actually help them. This show, what we're doing, helps those musicians because, again, it's the Almighty Voices model, but we put a model together where people can engage with this show, raise money for their charity, and the musicians on this show and the people who are involved in this show, we have a sponsor in Canada Life. So we actually paid people to do this and they'll have an ongoing uh, residual from this. And we've made, we've fashioned this show in order to do that. Oh, nice. So it, I think a little off the, off your question, but we get to help people help people. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you get to become healthy but you get to help people. And I don't, there, I don't, I'm lost for something to whine about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. really lost. I'm like, no, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's it's everything good. I ever wanted. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. Um, you, you, you're known as a, as a singer, um, an actor, uh, activist and philanthropist, so are there any causes that are especially important? Obviously the food bank uh, because of here on Carol, but anything that's especially important that you, you uh, really like to support? Well, I have um, two organizations that I am directly associated with. One is the Red Cross and, um, and I'm working with the Red Cross currently to go into communities virtually 
um, particularly right now a focus in the north mm -hmm. because there's a that isolation in the north creates uh, other challenges which we have to address and we have to go in and make sure that those people are that they know that somebody cares for them and that somebody's actually caring for them mm -hmm. right so that's what the red cross does the heart and soul of the red cross the dna of the red cross is love and helping those who are vulnerable whoever they are wherever they are without color or creed or politics none of that if you need help you need to ask and if you ask i promise you i promise you that i will help you that i can help you and the other one is uh the dope team in calgary and the dope team uh dopes spelled d-o-a-p stands for downtown outreach addictions partnership um and i i haven't and it tears my heart out i haven't been on a shift with the dope team for some time now because i have gray hair <laughs> it's a sad thing i like the gray hair but it, you know, it, it took me out of being able to go out into the trenches. <laughs> um, we are we are a, a crisis transport team, so we go out in vans, and we get calls from EPS and the police service and others um, when someone's in distress. And but it doesn't. It's not kind of necessarily the situation where they would be taken to a jail or mm -hmm. to a hospital but it is a crisis and, um, and we go out, get them, put them in the van, transport them, talk to them, love them and allow them an out from where they are. They get another step, another day, another, another sleep, another meal mm -hmm. and a new awakening the next day. So, it really tears my heart out to not be able to go out and do what I so dearly love doing. Mm -hmm. And that's work with the dope team. Um, here on Carol, so it supports food bank. Uh, are there any other charities it supports or is it more kind of just geared towards the food bank geared towards helping people around Christmas or like you'd mentioned earlier from new year's to Christmas. Uh, is it what, what kind of thing, Pardon me, what kind of things does it support? It has the ability to say to an organization, as I just said to you, if you need help, I can promise you, we can help you. Our main function is, I'm a one-trick pony, really. Um, our main function is to produce shows that raise money to relieve um, situations that may come up, i.e. disasters, like our flood here in Alberta or, or mm -hmm. the flood in Manitoba or the fires in Fort Mac, and um, as well as we work with a, the dope team is, is the umbrella of the dope team, for example, is Alpha House, which is a detox uh, center by and large. and um, provides uh, homes for people who are homeless, gets them into homes. Mm -hmm. um, Alcove here in Calgary, or just over there, <laughs> um, <laughs> is a woman's shelter. And so we have a variety of, of uh, where, where are you centered? Where do you live? Um, actually, I was born in Calgary, and I used to live in High River for a time, but I'm actually located just on an acreage just uh, southwest of Edmonton, so I'm actually not far away. Oh, you're just right around the corner. I am, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we focus at Christmas on food banks, but this year there's a, a wide range of organizations that, that in fact, we're helping. Um, you name somebody who's got a problem and they're probably on our radar. Mm -hmm. um, that's the ability that we have only because somebody either calls us or we hear some situation and we'll call somebody else. 
Absolutely. Uh, so you're busy with uh, here on Carol. We've got Christmas season coming up. And it's always kind of hard to say, like, especially with COVID, but once here on Carol is done, what do you kind of have upcoming for yourself uh, going into 2021? I have a, it's, it almost, I have to go to a paper and look to see because there's, there are so many wonderful things that, that uh, I'm involved in. Um, I'm in the third season, green lighted for a fourth season on a show called Red Earth Uncovered. Um, we, we will continue to, to work on Almighty Voices. Um, uh, and, and we're having conversations even as, uh, as comes up this weekend, uh, with a major broadcaster to talk about what would it look like if that, uh, was part of a regular programming on a major network. So there's a lot of things that we're looking at. I have a new album that I'm working on. Um, which I'm excited about, but I have to get to it. I and all the, see all this stuff back here. So all my toys, right? So, um, so I'm doing that. Um, I may do a virtual play with a, with a friend of mine, um, who is currently in Swift Current. Um, I used to live near there. That's talk, kind of funny. You know, is that right? Yeah, near well, you know the lyric. <laughs> I don't know where Gull Lake is. It's yeah, one of my landmarks. When I make this trip to Winnipeg every year, <laughs> I wait for Gull Lake. It is significant <laughs> in my world on the trip. Oh, we're almost get Gull Lake. Gull Lake, we're there. Almost there. <laughs> um, so, uh, the lyric you might know as a theater in Swift Current. Mm -hmm. yep. And the uh, lyric is uh, being run by my good friend. Gordon McCall, who started me, uh, gave me my first role as an actor. Um, this would be back in 1979 or so there. Uh, but we've got a long history. He's got a great history as a director. Um, he started Shakespeare on the Saskatchewan mm -hmm. with uh, Robert Lepage as one of his cohorts. Um, and he went on to Montreal, the Centaur Theater. He went to uh, Purdue University and became the head of the drama there, drama department. And then decided he wanted to come home and ended up settling down at the Lyric Theater in Swift Current. So we've been talking a little bit about what might be possible coming down the road. But that's, a, you know, that's the start of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and if Allison was here, I'd say, hey, what else is on the... <laughs> on that calendar, Alex, you know, like that, I'd, I'd be more full of stuff. Um, so the last question is, uh, if people want to know more about the Here on Carol, uh, find ways they can help, uh, watch it, uh, just find out information, uh, get tickets, where do they go? How do they, how do they get all that information? Right now, if you went to hereoncarol.ca, you'll find everything that you need to know about this year's Huron Carol, some of the history of the Huron Carol, and um, more importantly, how to get engaged with the Huron Carol. If you have an organization that needs help, that needs to raise money, um, I encourage you to go to the Huron Carol, take a look at, there's a, an eight minute trailer of this year's show, which you can see, you, go, you should go take a look at it, Craig. Uh, if you haven't already, um, give you an idea. Um, and then just follow the, you know, the, the path and contact them. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Tom Jackson. And if you did, please leave a rating and review. You can reach me at craig at canadaehx.ca. You can visit my website where you'll find hundreds of articles on Canada's history, as well as all of my podcast episodes. Just go to canadaehx.ca. Again, you can support the podcast for as little as $3 a month. Just go to patreon.com slash Canada EHX. Just like all of these wonderful patrons have. Aaron O'Hara, Robert Dunseith, Todd Casey, Catherine Roy, Luke S., Vic Hedges, J.P. Bear, Jason Hall, Phil Maynard, Spencer M., 
and Iris Gray. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.